What's up, stinkers? Sean here, about to run you through how to make your own jaw harp once again. We had a bit of a goof last time around. We got 95% of the way through and then kind of blew it. So here I am uh, to show you the finished product. But someone brought up a good point last time that they didn't even know what the end goal was. They didn't see the actual product we were trying to make. So I got one here that I finished not too long ago. Uh, basically, you hold the handle, you strike one end, your mouth covers this portion of the instrument, and your throat and mouth cavity create a resonance chamber, and you get to become part of the musical instrument you're playing. The method is simple. You hold one end, you strike one end, and you change the shape of your mouth and throat to, to alter the sound and make funky little beats. It's really a great collaborative instrument. You get a few friends together all playing these. You get to make a lot of interlocking melodies and it's a lot of fun. Or you can accompany modern or other traditional instruments with it. I'll show you a little bit more on the playing method. I think I'll do a complete tutorial in another video. Uh, so for now, let's just go over how to make your own. Just like last time, I'll run you through all the basic steps and I'll explain them as simply as I can. Remember, I am probably going to be using a lot of cutting implements that you're not too familiar with, uh, but you don't need all that jazz uh, right away to get started. I learned how to make these instruments on like a simple box cutter with disposable blades. Very cheap, but over the long term, uh, it becomes very expensive replacing those blades. So at some point, I would recommend that you get yourself either uh, a chip carving knife or if you happen to know exactly what type of bamboo jaw harp you're trying to make, go for one of the traditional cutting implements of the culture from which you are taking notes. So let's get started. We'll begin with a simple sketch on our piece of bamboo, which is about a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter. Doesn't have to be exactly that, but you know, close to those dimensions is, is pretty awesome. And what we'll do is we'll identify the straighter end of the two. This end curves just a little bit down as you reach the right side. This side looks to be a bit more straight, so we'll actually be making our instrument from here to here. First we'll sketch our striking end. I guess I can put the finished product alongside so you can see exactly the cuts we're making and ultimately what they'll look like. Make another down here border of the reed itself, the guard for the handle, and this will be the pendulum's weight right there. So to begin, we'll take our woodworking saw. You can use a hacksaw. This is called a coping saw. Uh, it's just a finer blade for, for I guess, more detailed cuts. But you can use whatever you have at your disposal, whatever's cheap, whatever's close. And we'll go ahead and we'll saw, not straight down, but at a slight angle toward your hand, about three quarters of the way through the material. That looks pretty good. At about three quarters of the way through, you can see our slight angle toward the hand, and that just makes for a, a stronger striking button. The next cut will be on the third line away from the striking end. This one will be straight down and only halfway through the material.
same thing. Moving on to the fourth line. Here you can see all three cuts clearly. First one is the deepest, and the second and third will be the space we create for the reed itself. Now what we want to do is we want to remove this little chunk of bamboo. So what I like to do is I like to stick the point of the blade right inside the corner of the furthest cut and I'll line it up so that when I lower the belly of the blade it wants to reach the bottom of the opposite cut. Slowly but surely you lower it down and you just chip away that bit of material. Flip it over the other side, do the exact same thing. Comes out very simply. At that point we just level it out And we have a nice flat surface to work with. Now before we move on and begin removing the reed from this portion of the instrument, I like to flip it over and remove the bark from the underside that is contained within this section. I'll put a couple indicator cuts to show me the border of the section. Lay the belly across the underside of the instrument. And then simply just remove the bark between these two lines. We do that just by lowering the belly of the blade and pushing with a few shallow cuts the length of the bamboo until we reach the opposite side. Not perfectly straight. We can fix that without much hassle. Cool. So now to help us along our way, we'll go ahead and sketch the reed we want to create right down the middle here. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a, a rough guide. Again, with a completely vertical cut from one end to the other on both sides. From there on either side, we'll continue with angled cuts, moving material little by little until we've broken through to the underside. Now it's at this point we've broken through on both sides, but I can clearly see that it's off center. And it's early enough in the process to where that doesn't really matter, because I can just go ahead and shave off material from the entire left side until this is actually lying in the center of our piece of bamboo. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that right now. That looks pretty good. Not bad. Now be careful because these edges are incredibly sharp now. I'm going to go ahead 
and sand them down just a bit for my own comfort. Take a little bit of sandpaper, sound out these grooves. All right, now let's go ahead and proceed by freeing up this end of the reed right here. As you can see, it's the farthest point away from the striking end. And once we free the upper portion of the pendulum, that will allow the whole tongue or lamella to move freely within both sides of the frame. Proceed on to the next step. Now at this point, we're going to begin shaving away material from the upper portion of the pendulum, but I want to do the same thing on the underside of this portion as I did for the underside of this portion. And in doing that, we're just going to trace our line around the piece of bamboo. Make a couple indicator cuts, and then on the underside, form a line with the belly of the blade. Same thing for the top portion. And we'll go ahead and shave away that bark to make breaking through that much easier. To remove the material from the striking end to the top of the pendulum's weight, we'll just lay the belly of our blade across the line and very cautiously and purposefully slide the blade forward. So what we're going to do now, before we free the center from the two arms on either side, I want to make just some small cuts on either side of the reed to help guide our splits. Once I've finished making these relief cuts on the underside, I'll show you real quick. I'm going to go back to the top and I'm going to trace lines exactly where I want to split the wood. Ideally, you want 
the sections split into a third, a third, and a third. You pinch the top, you place the blade in the groove you've made, lower the point down to the base of this sort of quarter pipe, and then you just lower the belly toward you with a little bit of pressure. See the split? Perfect. Do the exact same thing to the opposite side. Now the reason that we pinch the top during this process is that so these splits don't carry all the way through the striking button. At this point, we just go ahead and free up those arms. We have a free read. Now let's tune her. And that's all there is to it. Quick and dirty. A good once over. And when you're ready to finally tune it to a specific note, the thinner you make the reed, and the shorter or more narrow you make the pendulum's weight, the higher the note will be. The thinner the upper arms and top portion of the pendulum are, the lower. And when you're all done, you could carve the handle into cool shapes and designs like I did here. These are very easy to do and they could take only a few more minutes to give you a really unique custom made piece. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see examples of your jaw harps in the future. Take care.